everyone. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Learn English with Podcast. I'm thrilled to have you here with me today as we dive into another fun and engaging conversation. Today, we're taking it up a notch to level five. So get ready to challenge yourself a bit more. But don't worry. I'll be here guiding you every step of the way. Remember, it's all about having fun while learning. Before we begin, let me ask you something. Have you ever tried to explain a complicated idea to someone who had no clue what you were talking about? Maybe you ended up using hand gestures, sound effects, or even drawing pictures in the air? Well, that's exactly what we'll be doing today. Exploring how to explain difficult things in simple English. But, of course, we'll add some fun twists along the way. So, grab a cup of tea, get comfy, and let's get started. Now, picture this. You're at a party, and someone asks you to explain how a computer works. Uh-oh, you think this could get complicated. But you're not going to back down. You're ready to tackle this challenge. How would you start? Maybe with something simple like, a computer is like a really smart and fast brain that can remember things and solve problems. Sounds good, right? It's simple, clear, and gets the idea across. But let's take it up a notch. Imagine you're explaining the same thing to a child. You might say, a computer is like a magic box that can play games, help with homework, and talk to friends far away. Now, you've added a bit of imagination to make it more relatable. See how you can adjust your language depending on who you're talking to. That's one of the keys to mastering English. Speaking of magic, do you believe in magic tricks? I remember the first time I saw a magician pull a rabbit out of a hat. I was amazed, but then I started wondering, how did he do it? That's when I learned a valuable lesson. Things aren't always as they seem. This is also true in language. Sometimes words can be tricky, and their meanings might surprise you. Have you ever come across a word that seemed to mean one thing but actually meant something else? If you have... You're not alone. Let me share a funny story with you. A friend of mine once went to a restaurant in an English-speaking country. She wanted to order a salad, so she confidently asked for a garden salad. But when her order arrived, she was shocked to see that it was just a bowl of lettuce with a few tomatoes. She had expected something more exciting, like a salad with all sorts of veggies and maybe even some cheese. She quickly learned that in some places, a garden salad is just the basics. Lettuce, tomatoes, and maybe a cucumber or two. The lesson, always be clear about what you want, especially when speaking in another language. Now let me turn the tables on you. Have you ever had a situation where you said something in English and it didn't come out the way you expected? Maybe you used a word that you thought meant one thing, but it actually meant something completely different. How did you handle it? Sometimes the best way to learn is by making mistakes and laughing about them afterward. Here's another thought for you. What if we could learn English through jokes? Jokes are a great way to understand wordplay, cultural references, and even some grammar. For example, why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Get it? Outstanding means both standing out and being really good at something. It's a clever play on words. Have you ever heard a joke in English that made you think, wait, I don't get it. But then, after a moment, it clicked and you couldn't stop laughing. Jokes can be a fantastic way to learn because they make language fun. 
Now, let's talk about something we all love. Food. Food is a universal language, and it's also a great way to learn new vocabulary. Think about your favorite dish. How would you describe it to someone who has never tasted it before? You might say, it's spicy with a rich creamy sauce and tender pieces of chicken. You're using descriptive words to paint a picture with your language. That's a powerful skill in English. Speaking of food, did I ever tell you about the time I tried to order pizza in a different country? I was confident, thinking, pizza is pizza, right? How hard can it be? So I walked up to the counter and asked for a pepperoni pizza. But instead of getting a pizza with spicy sausage, I ended up with a pizza covered in bell peppers. It turns out that in some places, pepperoni means bell peppers, not spicy sausage. I learned my lesson. Always double-check the menu and don't be afraid to ask questions. Let's shift gears a little. Have you ever been in a situation where you needed to give someone directions in English? It can be a bit tricky, especially if you're not familiar with the area yourself. But here's a tip. Use landmarks. Instead of saying, go 200 meters north, you could say, walk straight until you see the big blue building, then turn left. This makes it easier for the other person to follow your instructions, even if they don't understand all the words. Imagine you're visiting a new city, and someone asks you for directions. You might say, sure. Walk down this street until you see a coffee shop on your right. After that, take the second left and you'll find the museum at the end of the road. See how clear and simple that is? Even if the person doesn't know the exact distance, they can still find their way using your directions. But what if you're the one who's lost? How would you ask for help? You could say, excuse me, can you tell me how to get to the nearest train station? Or, if you're really lost, I'm sorry, I think I'm lost. Can you help me find my way back to the main street? Don't be shy about asking for help. Most people are happy to assist, especially if you're polite and friendly. All right, let's have a bit of fun. I'm going to describe a situation and I want you to imagine yourself in it. Ready? Okay, here we go. You're at a big international conference. People from all over the world are there, and everyone is speaking English. You strike up a conversation with someone, and they start telling you about their work. But they're using a lot of technical terms that you don't understand. What do you do? Do you nod and pretend you understand? Or do you ask them to explain in simpler terms? Here's a tip. Don't be afraid to ask for clarification. You could say, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that term. Could you explain it in a different way? This shows that you're interested in the conversation and willing to learn. Plus, it's a great way to expand your vocabulary. Before we wrap up, let's recap some of the key points we've covered today. We talked about how to simplify complex ideas, the importance of being clear when communicating, and how to use humor and food as tools for learning English. We also discussed giving and receiving directions and the importance of asking for help when needed. Remember, learning a language is like a journey. There will be bumps along the way, but each mistake is an opportunity to learn and grow. Thank you so much for joining me today on this English learning adventure. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Remember, the key to mastering English is to keep practicing, stay curious, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. 
and most importantly, keep it fun. Whether you're explaining how a computer works, ordering food, or giving directions, always try to enjoy the process. I can't wait to see you in the next episode, where we'll tackle even more exciting topics and continue our journey to fluency together. Until then, keep practicing, keep smiling, and keep learning. Goodbye for now.